Happy Friday, everyone. Darren Hardy here coming from one of our quarantine and remote home offices of the Darren Hardy LLC headquarters. This is our final real-time Q&A session uh, following along our special Darren Daily mini-series that ran this week titled Spring Cleaning Your Life and Your Business. First of all, I just wanna say thank you for all your amazing comments and the shares that you have put out and the insightful questions that you came up with. It seems that the Better Everyday movement has been very helpful helpful to many people all over the world. And so thank you for contributing to that and uh, thank you for being a part of that as well. So in this final episode of our Darren Daily special spring cleaning uh, series, we focused on spring cleaning your environment. And we all know in communication that if you cannot convince them, confuse them. So <laughs> I certainly did one or the other because it seems that everybody's questions from this final episode were already satiated by the episode itself. So I thought, for this final episode, what I thought I would do is to share the message that I shared with my A-team early this morning and a few of my closest friends. I have over the last uh, several weeks sent out a special communication every morning to my team. Uh, I would suggest that during these times that you are even more persistent in your communications with your team. And um, this was the message that I sent out here this morning and I wanna share that with all of you in the hopes that it might benefit you because it is an important lesson on how to think about and how to deal with great difficulty, particularly during a time of crisis, um, particularly a crisis that you don't know will end or when it will end or what life will be like after it does finally end. And this story comes out of Jim Collins' book, uh, Good to Great. And the story is about Admiral Jim Stockdale. Now, Stockdale was the highest ranking U.S. military officer in the Hanoi Hilton prisoner of camp uh, during the war. This was during the, the height of the Vietnam War. Stockdale himself, being a high officer, was tortured over 20 times during his eight-year imprisonment, brutally, in order to try to use him as an example, to break the highest officer within the prisoner of war camp. Stockdale lived out that imprisonment without any prisoner rights, with no set release date, with no certainty of survival at all, and he never uh, knew whether he would ever see his family again. I mean, just think of the hopelessness that would settle in during eight years of that kind of intense isolation. Now, think about the isolation that we've been in and uh, by comparison. So all through that, Stockdale remained steadfast as a leader, even while in prison. He did everything he could to try to create conditions that would increase the number of prisoners under his leadership that would survive unbroken. This while fighting an internal war against his captors. They were attempting to use the prisoners for propaganda purposes. At one point, Stockdale beat himself with a stool, cut himself with a razor, purposefully disfiguring himself so that he could not be used as an example of a well-treated prisoner. He communicated secret intelligence messages through letters with his wife. He knew full well that if he was ever discovered, that would mean more torture, if not immediate death. He instituted a elaborate internal communication system with the other prisoners. This was to reduce their sense of isolation, something their captors tried to create. Again, while I am suggesting that you make your communications intense, particularly when others are in isolation. After his release, Stockdale became the first three-star uh, officer of the Navy to wear both the aviator rings and the Congressional Medal of Honor. So. How on earth did he deal with all of this? Particularly when during going through it, he did not know the end of the story. Here's what he said. I never lost faith in the end of the story. I never lost faith in the happy ending. I never doubted not only that I would get out, but that I would prevail in my principles in the end. I decided I would turn my experience being in prison into the positive defining event of my life. In retrospect, he said, I would not trade that experience. Now, when he was asked, well, who didn't make it out of the prisoner camps? He said, oh, that's easy. The optimists, the optimists, yeah, the optimists, he went on. Oh, those were the ones who said, we're gonna be out by Christmas. And then Christmas would come and Christmas would go. Then they say, we're gonna be out by Easter. Does that sound familiar? And Easter would come and Easter would go. Then. Thanksgiving, and soon it would be Christmas again. They died, he said, of a broken heart. You see, this is a very important lesson he emphasized. You must never confuse faith 
that you will prevail in the end, which you can never afford to lose, with the discipline to confront the most brutal facts of your current reality, whatever they may be. You see, this is the paradox that we're in now. The biggest difference between those who are staying even keeled as we go through this crisis and those who are really struggling through our current crisis is this, a willingness to accept the brutal facts, the new normal, and a determination to focus on what we can do at this point, within this new normal, within the confines of our current brutal facts. People who are doing that, those are leaders who are pivoting quickly and making the most of the situation to keep their people positive and hopeful. Those are parents who are building homeschool schedules for their children. Those are people who are creating boundaries and setting up uh, environments to optimize their productivity even while working from home and even in difficult and chaotic uh, environments. Those are healthy people who are socially distancing themselves to protect others. By contrast, there are the ones who are struggling are the ones who are panicking from a position of scarcity. Those that are stuck in a cycle of fear, keeping themselves glued to the boob tube and their social media channels and just perpetuating the fear mongering that they're pouring into their noggin. Those are the people who are holding on to a bygone era. This is a new reality. Cor coronavirus is forever changing the trajectory of our culture and society. We will never go back to the way it was before COVID-19. And these are also people who are blindly expecting it all to end soon and for us all to go back to quote unquote normal. You see, it is denial and defeat that keeps us from overcoming obstacles and achieving progress from this point forward. So what do we do? Three things, are you ready? Number one, never lose faith in the happy ending of the story. We will prevail. Eventually, at some timeline we don't know now, this too shall pass. Never lose that faith. Number two, address the brutal facts of this new normal. Control what you can control and make the most of it. It is what it is. Now what? Now what is the constant mantra you should have in your head? Okay, here's where we are. Here's what we've got. Now what? What positive can we make of the brutal facts of our current reality? And number three, decide to turn this COVID-19 experience into the greatest positive defining event of your life. It's just a choice. It's just making a decision that this will be that bend in the growth trajectory of you as a human being, that you will emerge from this crisis a better, a stronger, and a more capable leader, that you will emerge from this crisis a better, more engaged parent, that you will emerge from this crisis a more compassionate and loving and caring friend, and that you will emerge from this crisis a more engaged, caring, and connected citizen than you were going into it. That's what we can do. And that is what those around you are expecting of you and are counting on you to do. So with that, I say stay connected to us. Stay connected to, to me and to our A-team. Uh, again, we consider ourselves in the healthcare business. While there are a lot of amazing people out there who are looking after the care of you and the, your, your physical health, we are out here working like mad, looking out for the uh, care of your mental health. And so stay connected to us. We put a, together a few uh, real-time resources for you. One is called the Be the Exception Crisis Control page. It's all the assets and resources and communications we're putting out to try to fuel your mind and give you resources to use out there uh, with your families and with your teams. Uh, I'll post a link to that below. We also set up a uh, Better Every Day Leadership uh, Crisis page as well. A half a dozen of our Darren Daily messages that we pulled out of the vault that we think you might want to put out to your families, to your teams, to the people who you're trying to keep positive on your social channels and so forth. These are the messages that could have a positive impact on them. So we aggregated those for you. And then also we have a, a, a private 
um, closed, be the exception, Facebook group. I'll post a link to that. Just ask for a uh, invite on that. And it's where we're sharing all of our communications on a, a real-time basis. There's over 6,000 people now that are connected to that group. And what a amazingly positive and supportive and resource sh uh, sharing group of people. So I'll post a link to that as well. Last suggestion that I have for you here on this Friday of, I could consider it kind of week three in, in ground zero of the coronavirus crisis here, is this week and give yourself permission to have some fun. It's been a long week, right? I mean, it felt like a year this week. And uh, even if you weren't working as hard as, uh, as others, I, I know that just the mental and emotional strain that you've gone through this week, but give yourself permission to disconnect from the, all the crazy, have some fun, um, relax. It's going to wind back up on Monday again, but this weekend, have some fun. And uh, lastly, stay strong. And just remember, just remember, we got this.